why do we call this Good Friday? Why would we call the most horrific event in all of human history good? But the reality is, though the death of Christ on the cross was the most horrific event in history, it was also one of the best events in all of history because our sin was paid for. Tonight we have a high privilege of reflecting on the goodness of God, on reflecting of the crucifixion of Christ, on on reflecting on what Christ has done for each of us. And I want to invite you to reflect with us tonight, to sing along as you feel led, to stand, to sit, to kneel if that's what is needed, And at the end of tonight's service, we will be celebrating communion as a way to remember what Christ has done for us. So join us as we reflect on what Christ has done for us, for our good and for his glory. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Luke 23, 32-34. Child, there is freedom 
from all of it. Say goodbye to every sin. Pause for a moment. Ponder that God, through Jesus, has forgiven you for your sins, past, present, and future. Receive the forgiveness He has given to you, knowing full well the weight of your sin and that all sin leads to death. On the cross, He paid for your sin and my sin, that we might receive his grace and his forgiveness. Pause for a minute and reflect that though you have sinned, because of what Christ has done on the cross, you are forgiven. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly. For we are getting with our deeds what we deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 39 through 43. a place for me. I am 
am a child of God. Pause for a moment and reflect on the reality that we all deserve death. We all deserve death for the sins that we've committed, for what we have done with our lives, for what we've seen with our eyes. But who the Son has set free, He has set free indeed. It is the mercy of God alone that frees us from death's grip. It is by grace alone that we might have life in Jesus. Ponder again the reality that there were criminals hanging on either side of Christ. And one of those criminals realized the weightiness of his sin and his desperate need for a Savior and reached out to Christ. And Christ said, Today you will be with me in paradise. Not because that criminal had a way to solve his own sin problem, but because he knew Jesus did. It is by grace alone, it is by what Christ has done on the cross alone that we might have life. Pause and reflect again on the reality, and this is a hard reality, what we all deserve on our own is death. It makes grace Grace tastes oh so good when we realize that what we deserve on our own is death, but what Christ gives us is life. Ponder that thought with me. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. John 19, 26 and 27. Forgiven you. 
Pause for a moment with me and ponder this thought. God has given, given us two blessed gifts. First and foremost, his son, Jesus Christ. And secondly, one another. Pause and look to your left and look to your right. As the church, we are family. Just as the disciple took Mary into his home and cared for her, we are called to care for one another in Christ. We are never alone. In this passage, we see that Jesus was looking out for his mother's welfare, even while he was suffering. Take a brief moment to think about the many ways that you need help and thank God that he has placed you in a church family for your good. This past Monday night, 18 of us gathered in this room and circled up to pray for the needs of this congregation, for the needs of this city, for the needs of this area. And it was a profound evening of prayer. I really believe that's what the Lord wants us to be is to be here for one another. And as he gave his mother to the disciple and his, his disciple to his mother, he gives us to one another as well. We are so far better together than we are apart. And as the church, we are called the body of Christ. And we're going to celebrate in, in a little bit the broken body of Christ in communion but his broken body made us have the ability to be the church, to be unified, to be brought together. So by his broken body, we can be made whole again. Pause and thank God for the reality that he has placed you in a loving church. Lord, I thank you that you have placed each and every one of us here tonight. Lord, may we realize your great love for us through your bride, the, the church. Lord, may we be a reflection of who you are. Lord, may we uh, be there for one another as we are going through struggles, as we are grieving loss, as we are suffering as we are encountering our own sin, Lord, may we realize that we do not go it alone. Lord, you are with us, and your church is with us. Lord, we thank you for that blessed gift.
in your name. Amen. cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabathani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15, 34. strong from it I cannot hide Father you know I'm afraid the world is so heavy and lonely this day
pause for a moment. The weight of the world's sin was upon Jesus. God being holy cannot stand sin. Sin is an offense to God. And Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our sin upon Jesus. Ponder the reality of this moment that caused Christ to cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To be forsaken means to be to have your back turned uh, to have your back turned and Jesus was feeling as though he was not in tune with the father that he was not one with the father that he was in a sense separated and he was feeling the weight of our sin on him in that moment it is not a beautiful moment to ponder But it is beautiful because Christ's sacrifice on the cross makes our living in Christ a possibility. Ponder with me the weight of the sin of the entire world on Jesus. Lord, we can't even ponder the reality of the entire weight of of the entire world on Jesus all at once. Lord, we can't even fathom the weight of one day. But Lord, he took the weight of all sin, past, present, and future, for those of us that have confessed and believe. Lord, he has taken our sin as far as the east is from the west. He has separated our sin from us. And the only way he could do that was by sacrificing himself. Because he was the only one who lived a perfect life and was able to be that perfect sacrifice. Lord, help us realize that though this is a weighty reality, that Jesus took all our sin upon himself. Lord, help us realize that Jesus took that willingly that he took our sin because of his great love for us lord help us ponder the reality of the weightiness of our sin but let let us not stay stuck there lord we know that tonight we celebrate good friday but lord we know that sunday's coming in your mighty and holy name We pray this. Amen. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. John 19 28.
left me wanting more till I found myself face down on your shore you say come to the river oh and lay yourself down let your heart be found you say come to the river drink from this cup I pour and thirst no selfish pride I became a slave but you placed the thirst in me with no drink inside cause I could not see till I looked through your eyes you say come to the river Self down, let your heart be found. You say, Come to the river, drink from this cup I pour, and thirst no more. You say, Come to the river, and thirst no more. say come to the river and there's no more pause with me and ponder the reality that Jesus did not come to abolish the law but rather to fulfill it in every perfect way his perfect life and brutal death allow him to be the only perfect sacrifice for our sins. Think about the fact that 353 Old Testament prophecies have been fulfilled in Jesus. Pause and listen carefully to these words from the book of Isaiah chapter 53. It says Surely he took, upon, he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. Ponder the reality that he calls us to come to the river, to come and thirst no more. Pause with me and ponder the reality that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for all our sin. Lord, we thank you that we no longer have to thirst. That we can be fulfilled by the living water, you. Lord, I pray that we would stop and ponder the reality 
of what you have done for us, that you gave yourself that we might have life. Lord, you are the living water. You are the bread of life. You are the light of the world. We cannot save ourselves. On our own accord, Lord, we would make things far worse. But in you there is hope. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that you have fulfilled over 300 Old Testament prophecies in your life alone. Lord, we thank you for being here with us tonight. We thank you for leading us and guiding us tonight. And Lord, we do celebrate the cross that you were crucified on and thank you for your price that you paid that we do not deserve. Lord, we do not deserve the freedom that you give and we thank you for it. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. to me it stands in my defense Jesus it's your blood what can wash away our sins what can make us whole again nothing but the blood nothing but the blood Testifies in grace, tells of the Father's heart to make a way for us. Now boldly we approach, not earthly confidence, it's only by your blood. What can wash away our sin? But the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash us pure as snow? Welcome as the friends of God. Nothing but your blood, nothing but your blood, King Jesus. But your blood, nothing but your blood, King Jesus. Pause with me and reflect on the reality that it is finished. 
What did Jesus mean by it is finished? The Greek word, I'm going to butcher this, to tell a story means that our debt has been paid in full. Our debt has been wiped away. For Jesus, this means that his suffering was finally over. That God's will for Jesus on earth was accomplished. And the power of sin was finally crushed. Jesus' work on the cross for our good is a finished work. Our debt has been paid. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Luke 23, 46. Savior for everyone has come, bringing the dead to life. By his stripes we are healed, by his death we can live, in Jesus' name. By his stripes we are healed. By his death we can live in Jesus' name. By his stripes we are healed. By his death we can live in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Pause for a moment once again. These words of Jesus to God the Father are words of intimacy, truth, and surrender. Listen to these words again. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Once again, those words are words of intimacy, of trust, and of complete surrender. May our words be the same. Pray with me. Father, when it comes time for us to let go of this life, help us do it with the same kind of faith and confidence that we see in Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you for our salvation and eternal life. 
made possible by Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we end our service, I want to invite you to partake in communion with us. And here at Lakeside, we invite anyone who is a follower of Jesus Christ, anyone who Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, we want to invite you to partake in the Lord's Supper. Tonight, I ask that as we take the Lord's Supper, we respect those around us. We have a communion table here as well as here. If you need to do business with God to confess any unrepented of sin in your heart, I want to give you the opportunity to do that in your seats. And as you feel led, step up front and you can take communion either as individuals or as a family. And then after you take communion, uh, just out of reverence for this moment and out of reverence for those the, the, the rest of the people in the congregation, um, I ask that you just would leave very quietly. We're going to have music playing. And this is a time to remember what Christ has done for us. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave it, to his, gave it to his disciples and said, do this as often as you, do this in remembrance of me. And he took the bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples as a reminder of what he was going to do so that they would also remember moving forward to reflect on the cross of Christ. And in the same way, he took the cup and he took the cup and said, this is the blood, which is a new covenant in my name. And he gave that drink, he gave that wine to his disciples so that they would remember his sacrifice on the cross. Tonight we have an incredible opportunity to remember what Christ has done for us and honestly, each and every time we partake of any food or any drink, we should remember what Christ has done for us. But especially as we celebrate communion, I, I want to invite you to reflect on the cross that is in front of us and reflect on the reality of what Christ has done for each and every one of us. He gave his life so that we might live the moment that we celebrate on Good Friday, which was certainly an evil and wicked moment in history, the worst of all moments, is truly a beautiful moment because it shows Christ's love for us. Lord, though we deserve sin, though we deserve death because of our sin, what you have given us is life. Lord, I pray that as we celebrate communion right now, Lord, I pray that this moment would be a moment where we would truly identify with the reality that you gave your life for us. Lord, may we realize that you demonstrated your love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, you died for us. You did not wait for us to clean ourselves up because we can't. Though we were sinners, Lord, you died for us in our place, and we thank you for that blessed gift and celebrate that now. In your name we pray, amen.